Hi all. Today I'm doing a tutorial on a simple balustrade checker where we can see the outputs for point load, line load and uniform distributed load as moments and deflections all at the same time. And we can of course change the height and change the spacing of the posts. So this allows us to get the max, the worst case of all the scenarios given. Let's have a look. And by the way, you can get these completed scripts free to download. Okay, as always, I'm starting off with a point, sending it to zero, zero, zero. Then I'm going to turn that point into its components. Then I'm going to return those components into a point. X, Y, and the Z, I'm going to put a slider in so we can vary the height of the second point. I'm going to call this height and I'm going to make it go up to 1.5 meters. Then we just need to add our Z to this additional height. I'll set it to about 1.1 meters. Now I've got the two points create a line that represents the staunchion or the post of the balustrade. Then I'm going to create another slider, call this one spacing. I'm going to set this to a maximum of say um, three meters. It's pretty big for spacing for a balustrade. Now I'm going to just do a move. So I'm going to get my original post. I want to move it left and right to create three posts. So I'm going to create a vector. going to be in the X direction. Now I've got a second post which I can control, but I also want to see a post on the other side. Now this is just visual but it helps to explain what's happening. So I'm going to do this negative component here. So I'll create a, pos a negative version of that and I'll add it to the move. So we've got two moves, so we should have three posts. So now as I vary the spacing, you can see that visually. Now the next thing I want to do is create a way of putting the loads in. So there's a number of ways of doing all these things, but in this case I'm just going to use panels. I call it point load in kilonewtons. I set that to one. Just make that a bit smaller. I want to do a point load. I want to do a line load. Kilonewtons per meter. And I want to do a uniform distributed load or UDL. And that's in KPA. So to calculate the moment, I'm going to first turn these loads into point load equivalents. Don't have to do anything for that one, obviously. For the second one, I'm going to multiply the line load by the spacing to get an equivalent point load. For the second one, I'm going to do the similar thing. However, um, I'll put a picture of the balustrade I'm thinking about up on the video um, and you'll be able to see that half of the load goes to the top of the post and half goes to the bottom via the fixing points in the glass. 
if your balustrade has a different infill and loads the upright posts differently, you'll have to do a slightly different calculation here. So because we know that that uniform distributed load is multiplied by the spacing and we also have to multiply it by 0 0.5 because it's only taking half of the load to that top point and I want an equivalent point at that top point. So now to calculate at the moment we just have to multiply the point load equivalents by the height of the post. So I've got one point load, a second one, I'm just holding down shift to add that to A, and the third one. Now to see that visually, I'm just going to turn that into a vector, and I want it in the Y direction. And then I want to move a point, which is the original point, by that vector. There's actually three vectors in that component. So they'll represent the three moment points. And then to see a moment diagram, I'm just going to use this surface component. Uh, which is up here, four points or three points. First point's the original point. Second point is the top of the post. Third point will be our newly created three points. So that gives you a representation of the three moment diagrams for the different three different loads. So I'm actually going to change some of these values now. Um, I'll make that 1.5. So now as we vary the height, um, that just changes the magnitude, but the spacing you can see. What happens is the point load is always the point load, but depending on the spacing, like here it's the most important case, but if you start more than a meter, the other load cases become the critical. Okay, that's pretty good to show moments, but now if we want to add deflections as well, I'm just going to turn these point loads into deflections with PL cubed on 3EI. So if I just set up some panels, I'm going to call this E. I'm going to have everything in either newtons or millimeters, just to keep everything consistent. And E will be 205,000 for steel. Next I want I. And that will be in millimeters to the four. And that will be three o o o o o o just as an example. Now I'm going to for my calculation, I'm going to set up a expression where we're going to have four inputs, obviously P. L, E, and I. Just remember these are case sensitive as well, which can be a bit annoying. Um, my equation is going to be P times L cubed divided by E three times E times L times I, sorry. Now it needs the inputs. Uh, point loads, we've already got uh, point load equivalent. 
but we will have to multiply them by a thousand because they're in kilonewtons and I want them in newtons. So I'll just set this up to multiply by a thousand. I've got our first one, second one, third one. That'll be our P's. Our L is the height. E we already got and I we've already got. So they should be in millimeters as results. Sorry, now what I haven't done is also multiply the L, the height by a thousand. That looks a bit better. All right. Now to see those deflections at the top, we're just going to move our top point, which was this point, by those three amounts. Um, I'm just going to use a vector here, and I want it in the y direction, but I want it in the negative y, so I'm just going to use an expression here in the input saying minus x. And that will give us, it's actually a thousand times, so <laughs> it's multiplying it by quite a lot. So um, for one millimeter, it's good to see it a bit um, multiplied because otherwise it's too small to see. But I'll just change that expression to 0.1. Um, times x. No, maybe that's too much. Point 0.2. Okay, now to create the deflected shape, I'm just going to use arc, SED, start, end, and direction. Start point is the original point. End point is the top point. Direction is just a vector, which will be the Z unit vector. Which is, uh, just means that the arc's starting at going straight up. So it's like it's fixed, fixed point. So we can see the three deflections there. So if we vary the height and the spacing, the deflections are changing and as with the moment case, the critical one depends on the spacing. Um, but yeah, it'll also depend on what you put in here as well. So this gives you all three at once to see the worst case. So the last thing I'm going to do is label these points. I'm going to use tag again. The location, I'm going to just set up a quick vector, make it, give it a little bit of height in the z direction. Um, I'm going to use move on these three points. That's where our text is going to be. Preview that off. Text, I'm going to concatenate the results. And at the end, I'm going to put millimeters. Now we can see how many millimeters we're deflecting for those three results. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to try a different arrangement of UDLs and yeah you can see the, the difference there zero spacing so there you go I hope you enjoyed 
something that might be useful, might save you a bit of time in your day-to-day -day work. Give us a thumbs up or follow if you liked, and I'll see you in the next one.